Hey, bass friends. Um, so I was picked up my bass today and started warming up, and I um, began playing this parallel fist pattern. Interesting, the one that's not fretted is the most challenging because it breaks the pattern. So I thought this would be, yeah, a fun um, exercise to explore. I feel like it gives a really good physical connection to the instrument and it's something you can do, span the entire fretboard on and it opens up a lot of um, musical and riff and groove bass possibilities. A lot of um, bass lines, you know, can start with a root and the fifth um, and build out from there to the octave and then three and seven and neighbor tones and chromatic stuff and all of that. Um, so I thought I would break down, yeah, how this exercise goes, how I engage with it, and how to engage with it musically as well. So it's not just like a um, kind of more monotonous robotic exercise. So the idea is to just climb up and down across the strings in fifths. Um, you'll notice, I'm using my pinky here. This is like the traditional, this comes from like upright bass where you don't use your, you don't go one finger for fret until you reach the octave. I know there are different schools of thought on this. Um, my, uh, my take is to try everything. And the only things that would sway you in either direction and having access to all of these things is great and also taking into account you know like your hand size as well is um if something's hurting if you're stretching too far that's a place to stop um and also if something's restricting you from the idea that's happening in here to happen here and it's not happening because you're adhering to a rule, then I encourage you to explore that space as well because there are some very cool things you can develop um, um, by stretching your fingers below the octave mark. And again, this doesn't feel painful to me, so I'm okay exploring that. Um, so you'll notice I'll play with that because I, you know, if we have our hand if I just have all my fingers together without spreading them at all, you know, where is that going to actually start to line up in terms of frets? So maybe all the way, even, even higher. I'm basically, yeah, this tops out at an F sharp. So I think that that's where I'm, I'm not separating my fingers at all. If I'm doing, I would say that's a very normal, hand position. I don't feel like I'm stretching at all from here. So let's see, where does that line up? And I encourage you to, to do this on your own too. And again, noticing, okay, so again, oh, interesting. I'm at an F sharp there, approximately right before the double dot. Noticing that it will be different as my fingers curve a little more to come up to the E string as opposed to on the G string. So yeah, that's another thing to play with is one, two, three, four versus one, two, three, four, like that, which would be like traditional um, left hand fingering on, um, or your fretboard fingering on upright bass. It's not fretboard, but you got the idea. So the exercise goes root fifth, root fifth, root fifth, and then you can then go up or down from there. If I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna start my pinky again, fifth, So on. Okay, 
it, so I'm gonna pause there because I noticed I got a little a little fret buzz. I wasn't totally playing playing that fret, and I also noticed as I was going down, um, and again, this is a nice thing from upright bass that to have your other finger is always in a conscious roll, so I'm not just going like pinky index, pinky index. All my fingers are down when I'm doing every subsequent finger behind that finger is down. And ideally it would be in a place for you to play. It feels a little weird, like on upright I would have this ready, like I'm going E, C sharp, or sorry, yeah, E, D sharp, D. It feels a little weird. This would feel more normal to me here. So again, just listening to myself, listening to my fingers, listening to my body. Making sure to breathe. I have a tendency to hold my breath when I'm playing, which can engage my um, sympathetic nervous system, which will wear me out faster. Um, so, especially when something's something like this, I try and breathe and sing or speak rhythmically or sing along with what I'm playing, which I could do here. I do like the kind of rhythmic, just in and out flow of this. So even just trying one inhale of, or the closer of going up the strings and one exhale as you're going down. <sighs> position or open position I'm using the open strings um, and that was a challenge having my breathing be regulated during that too so another thing I'm noticing um, and when I say fifth I mean the note that's well one half step from the triumph shown that splits the octave octave being on a normally tuned bass two strings up and two frets up I'm saying up in terms of pitch I recognize that people use different terminology versus up and down. And the fifth is one string up and two frets over to the right. So um, as I can see with that, that opens up the octave right there. Interesting. We'll work on that exercise for next for next time. I'm noticing my brain and fingers are not quite aligning there. So that would be like a root fifth octave line. Um, so that's really it. The one other thing that I pay attention to a lot from also being an upright place bass player, and I learned to just use one finger for plucking, um, both for jazz and classical style. So I have a tendency on electric bass to not equally go back and forth between my index and middle finger which at slower tempos is not a big deal and even I would say sometimes like tone wise I might really like there is a slight difference I feel like between these two fingers you know the skin the amount of bone the nail all of that um, as a speed of something increases that will come into play. Efficiency does come into play. So that's another thing I can bring awareness to in this exercise. Am I, am I going one, two, one, two, one, two? Okay, so now we've gotten to the point on this instrument, this lovely, beautiful instrument, which is a Breathe Loud, by the way, um, which is in need of new strings. These are DR strings, in case you're curious what I have on here. So I'm at G, G sharp, and if you can see from the back, I'm, I'm maxed out in terms of how far my thumb can go. Um, so on an electric bass, I guess it depends on your bass. Um, some are cut away enough where you can reach the top fret um, with your thumb still still behind. Um, that is not the case here, and this is another situation where upright bass scales come in because there's usually by the time you get to even the um, the octave double dot is where your thumb is coming over, and you start to actually use your thumb to play the thread, um, which is a lot easier when your instrument is like this. 
So I'm here, and I, I another thing I was noticing as I was climbing, when I got around the octave, I noticed my comfort level of what I was doing being challenged a little more. And I bring a lot of awareness into my body because um, I'm recently recovered from a chronic illness. Um, so engaging my nervous system is going to get me exhausted very quickly. Um, so I noticed my breathing changed a little bit. I started to tighten here. So just bring awareness, I did try to, or I did engage with that a little bit in terms of continue regulating breathing and let the shoulders relax. And I encourage the, for myself as well, um, just awareness around that is good. Awareness is the place to start and can go from there. So at this point, I'm gonna have to bring my thumb around and I'm gonna keep climbing. I'm gonna slow down a little bit for myself. There's no need to rush it. The, cleaner and more efficient I can get this exercise and the more comfortable it is at a slower tempo, the faster stuff comes back faster than in my experience. And I'm noticing here, like I had a flare out, this ring finger is starting to not keep the shape to get the best tone. And I'm really reaching over this part of my hand. <laughs> the action needs some love on this instrument as well. So really pushing in. This is actually nice to not have the thumb engage for a minute because I know I'm, I'm actually using my whole arm to pull back. I'm not squeezing forward. Okay, so I made it all the way to the top and I really encourage this. Um, I know there are schools of thought that um, essentially you really don't use this second octave of the instrument. Um, I, I think all frets should be used and I think they can all be explored equally. Um, and there's many different roles for this instrument. And um, in that case, it behooves me to have the same familiarity with this than with this. And I'm recognizing that I don't because I've played a lot of music and most of it rock, jazz, blues, electric bass, yeah, um, it's gonna fall in this range. And I get solos and I sometimes, there's two bass players and I can do more comping stuff, the rhythmic stuff, so. Um, and also I enjoy playing up here, I enjoy having access. I have a five string as well that goes up to a, a C on the set and I've been curious to explore lower than E or D if even dropping this down. Um, as well. I, I have a passion for exploring the sonic possibilities of this instrument and before even engaging in pedals or anything like that, that starts with all, all the, the natural harmonics uh, and frequencies that exist on the instrument. So that's it. Why don't we go through one time and we'll start at the octave and go down and back up. Yeah, that feels good. Um, and then I'll show you how this um, can be helpful with music making. So as I drop into this, I'm going to notice my breath. I'm going to notice any tension in my body. And I'm going to be really like, let this flow one in breath on the way up and exhale on the way down. So that my body can incorporate this technique uh, in a relaxed state so that when I come back to it, I don't feel tension and it will extend the amount of time I can get to engage with this lovely instrument. And of course, you're welcome to engage a metronome with this or a drum track. Um, I always think it's good too to, uh, I to, um, do spend time without using either of those things and use my internal metronome and see how consistent of a beat I can fit. I can make just me, myself and I. Maybe a fret or two. 
again, not judging, not shaming, just noticing and actually smiling to be like, yeah, there's, there's, the work continues in a very beautiful way. Okay, let's go back up to the octave. to close my eyes. Um, there's a lot of things that can be done on this instrument without sight. I mean, you can play this instrument without sight. Um, and as someone who has the gift of sight, um, I'm bringing awareness to like, do I need to be physically seeing what I'm doing right now? Or is that like a internal reassurance mechanism that's a habit that I'm relying on. So I always encourage to even like start with looking up because again, towards a performance mindset, um, there can be moments of like looking down and being really engaged with the instrument. And it's nice to have the freedom to engage with our other, if we're making music with other people or if we're sharing it with an audience, it's nice to be able to, to see them. I also noticed for myself I can, similar with meditation, resting my eyes can drop me into a more focused state as well. Um, there's also a trust factor, I feel like, just like human, human evolution-wise with that. If I'm closing my eyes like 10,000 years ago, it means I trust that nothing is about to attack me. There's no saber-toothed tiger or bear or someone with a peer, spear trying to get at me. So it sends a signal to my body now, because that wasn't that long ago in terms of human history and development, that like we can really, we can really relax. We can drop into a deeper state here. Um, yes, okay, so now musically. Exercises are great and they're really helpful and they can also, I've had them, I'm moving towards them becoming more like how is this like a meditative practice? How is this like an engagement with the instrument? Whereas like, I feel like culturally when I grew up, it was like, there was a lot of tension around it, tension around exercises, even just, yeah, saying that I did, did that thinking back to that time, um, which it, it, at the end of the day is not helpful. It just isn't, um, the more relaxed we are here all the way up and down, um, the more freedom we have in our movement and ability. Tension invites closure, um, which is not really helpful um, when playing a string instrument. Um, so beyond that though, I think it's fun to break out of that and use those same things as like, just like a fake mini little rule book um, to mess around, to see what comes out of it. So. I can even just start with just like improvising around that. stuff in there uh the fun thing about exercise is that we were taking that there was no key for that we were just moving chromatically on the instrument up and down in half steps or up in fourths as well so that can break break i noticed that immediately like oh that, that's interesting i had some more kind of um chromatic based ideas than maybe i normally would when approaching that um i also noticed i created some sequences there sequencing being like a riff that can be moved up or down within any sort of system. So that kind of, that's cool. That's an interesting device, which I might not have happened on without engaging with this exercise. Um, 
Uh, another thing I noticed I did was not right hand fretting um, or playing each instrument that I fretted with, each note I fretted with my left hand, which could be in the form of hammer ons and pull offs. So, another thing you could do with this exercise is do all hammer ons and pull offs. And the difference between those hammer on is you're starting with one fret with either well, some finger below the one you're gonna go to, and you're just using, just pressing down the string without fretting it with your, or without playing, plucking it with your um, right hand. Put it down. Pull off is the exact opposite, where you're starting with your fingers down and you're using your left hand to, to pluck the string again with your left hand. It's just a different type of tone. Noticing with the hammer on, I had a tendency to not go one, two, one, two. When I'm doing that and I'm like, really, I need to concentrate, I'll just stare at my fingers and go real slow. It's really, this is just brain programming. Interesting. That was really hard for me to do that with my right hand. That was, that was a. Uh, creating some new neural pathways there. Um, a lot of um, Central and South American um, and African influenced music um, resolves or, or revolves a lot around um, the fifth as well. a ton of uses for this my brain is uh feels like it's at capacity for this session so um yeah feel free to share any questions you have on anything i cover in this and um yeah if you have any exercises that are related to this i would love to learn about them myself um because i am a lifelong learner i feel like teachers at our hearts are our students thank you for watching see you next video